Hey guys, this is going to be a quick tips and tricks video for runners in Death Garden. If you haven't heard of this game or you're checking it out for the first time, it's Behavior Studios new game and it's a very fast paced teamwork based asymmetrical shooting game. The game consists of a hunter going against five runners who must work together as a team to try to escape. Teamwork is very essential in this game, so I'm going to throw together this video to show you some tips and tricks that you should know as runners so you can help contribute to your team's victory. Now, there actually is a tutorial in game that shows some of the real basic mechanics, but we're going to try to dive a little bit deeper than that. It leaves out a lot of important things, and you start to notice newer players making very similar mistakes. Okay, first off, we'll touch up on the basics. As a runner, you have three different classes to choose from. Each come with different special bolts that you can shoot. These are the class's unique abilities. Each class has three different bolts they use to help aid the runners or debuff the hunter, and using these bolts correctly is very essential to the team's success. Each bolt also gets another effect when upgraded completely that you can't see when selecting the class. We'll be going through every class later in this video to see what they are. On top of this, you could also choose two out of the eight currently available perks to go with your class as well. A lot of these synergize well with certain classes, and I'll probably go very in depth on each class as well as good perk synergies in future videos. The projectile bolts have three different tiers to upgrade. The first upgrade unlocks them, and the second upgrade doubles the impact size of the bolt. When you shoot a bolt, it creates a bubble around where the bolt hits, and anyone in that bubble receives the effects of the bolt. Here are the two sizes when having a tier 1 upgrade and a tier 2 upgrade. There is also a Caltrops upgrade you can buy for each ability. Unlocking this gives you another way to use your abilities, where you can drop a bubble at your feet that persists for 40 seconds and applies its effect when someone comes in contact with it. These can actually be seen by the hunter, so they're generally only used in two ways. You can drop them on an objective or the blood post, knowing that the hunter needs to contest it, giving him no choice but to walk through. The other, and probably more common way they are used, is in a chase. If the hunter is chasing you down close range, you can drop caltrops at your feet as you run, giving you more time to focus on an escape route rather than aiming while almost guaranteeing your abilities land. It's also important to know that caltrops cost slightly less than bolts, so this actually saves you NPI. Okay, on to the classes. We'll go in order, so to start we'll talk about support. Support class has a healing bolt that heals for almost a full bar of health. This happens over time, which is very important to know if you're healing someone who's being shot at. The tier 3 upgrade for this bolt is probably what makes this class stand out and is its main power spike. You can instantly revive a down player by shooting them with the bolt. This allows for cross map saves and helps with time efficiency a ton. The second bolt is a shield bolt. This adds another bar of temporary health to any runner shot with the bolt. The tier 3 upgrade for this protects against hacked crates. To clarify, when a hunter shoots a crate, it becomes hacked, and any runner that uses that crate then gets their aura revealed to the hunter afterwards for a short amount of time. This upgrade will trade your shield for immunity to that hack. Finally, we have the NPI bolt. This makes it so anybody shot with this bolt gets more NPI for all actions, which is essentially the ammo used for special bolts. The tier 3 of this bolt makes it so anybody currently under the effect of increased NPI shares NPI with the others that are affected. Support class is very strong and can really pull out some crazy plays for your team. The most obvious power is the instant pickup of downed survivors with tier 3 healing bolt. This can really turn a bad situation into a fairly manageable one very quickly. On top of this, supports are actually surprisingly strong when chased. They lack the ability to actually debuff the killer at all, but you can shield and heal yourself mid-chase to make it extremely difficult for a killer to down you, especially if their weapon isn't very high DPS. Keep in mind that the shield has a cooldown, but heals do not, meaning you can't shield someone again for a short amount of time after hitting them with one. However, you can spam heals on yourself or even your teammates, and it makes life hell for the hunter. At the blood post, it's good for the support to hang back from a safe distance and apply heals and shields for your team as they go for the save. Although it can definitely be a viable option to shield yourself and get the save, while keeping healing bolts ready to heal through any damage that you may take. It's very important to know as well that you can move while saving, as long as you don't leave a certain radius of the blood post. Okay, next up is the Torment class. Torment's first bolt is a hunter reveal that shows the aura of the hunter as well as what guns they're carrying and how much ammo they have. The tier 3 of this bolt denies the killer's ability to hack crates. Their second and probably most important bolt is Virus. Virus makes all actions take 500% longer. This turns blood post executions into a 15 second charge. 
The tier 3 of this bull instantly drains half the killer's stamina on contact. The last bull is the blinding bull, which does exactly what you would assume it does. It blinds. The third tier of this bull increases the hunter's weapon spread to maximum, which can be absolutely devastating against machine guns. Torment Clask may actually be the weakest one in a chase. He's definitely not completely useless though, as the blind ability is great for losing the killer, and tier 3 virus stamina drain can help a bit too. But most of the Torment's class abilities are more utility tools for the runner team. Now where the Torment class really shines is blood post plays. Applying virus to the hunter makes executions virtually impossible for 10 seconds until it wears off, as well as blinding being an amazing tool to help keep your team alive while the save goes through. Torment is also the best class to attempt a solo save with, as you can apply virus, follow up with a blind, and then channel the save while evading shots. If this can be pulled off, it allows the rest of the team to apply a ton of objective pressure, but it's also extremely risky and you should probably just save as a team. The last class, and probably the best for bullying the hunter, is Control. The first bolt is a slowing bolt. This slows the hunter down by a very significant amount, making chases almost impossible. Tier 3 of this bolt reduces the rate of fire of weapons by 50%. The second bolt is a stun bolt. Keep in mind, the hunter still has vision and the crosshair is only slightly thrown off so it's still possible to be shot mid-stun. The third tier of this bolt disables the HUD of the hunter for 4 seconds on impact. The control's last bolt is the degenerate bolt. This lowers the damage of the hunter by 50%, with tier 3 forcing a reload and making reloads take generally longer. The control class is the absolute best class for making the hunter's life miserable. If chained correctly, there's almost a constant CC and the degen bolts are crippling, especially if a support's nearby as well. In chases its control, try to juggle your abilities and don't spam them all at once. A stun followed by a slow right afterwards will pretty much completely shut down a hunter's chase. It's also good to help out some of the weaker classes if you see them getting chased near you. Throwing a round of your debuffs the hunter's way helps an incredible amount for the person being hunted. On blood post situations, hitting the hunter with degen bolts is amazing to help your team as they try to rescue. You could also stun the killer to interrupt his execute, but remember that he's immune for a short time afterwards, so make sure you time it correctly. If you're trying to solo save, make sure you only stun when you can begin a rescue directly afterwards, otherwise he'll execute in your face and you won't be able to stop him at all. We're going to be finishing the rest of the video with talk about strategy. This is a big thing that new players miss and there's no real direction for learning other than trial and error. I'll give you guys a walkthrough of how a typical game starts and what you should and shouldn't be doing. The first thing you should be doing is marking everything to farm MPI while also looking specifically for the blue upgrade crates. Keep in mind that when you grab loot from any of the crates, it gives it to all the players around you as well. Make sure to stick with your team if they're going to get loot as well as to look out for potential teammates that may be on their way before actually grabbing it. You can ping whatever it is you're standing on by pressing the Q button. It's very good to ping your upgrade crates, especially early game, so everyone on the team can get many upgrades fast. Doing objectives reveals you to the hunter, so never ever do them before at least getting a few upgrades first. It may honestly be worth it to completely ignore the objectives until your team is very stacked on upgrades, so that any bad situations that you might find yourselves in become way more manageable. When you're starting to feel confident in your build, or if your team starts doing objectives themselves, it's time to start working on objectives. You need to make sure to pressure multiple sides of the map. If only one objective is being worked on, the hunter can easily intercept and has no pressure to leave until he gets the downs on the runners that are there. If the survivors split up and pressure different sides of the map, it puts the hunter in a situation where he has to try to be everywhere at once. And if you can manage to not get down quickly, he'll find himself completely overwhelmed. I won't talk much about blood post play as I feel like we already covered that when we discussed the different classes. However, I will tell you that you don't need 4 runners to pull off a blood post rescue. If you're in comms or you're confident in your team, you can do objectives while the hunter is setting up for an execution to maximize your map pressure. This is very dangerous though in solo queue and should not be done unless you know for sure that your team can handle the situation. When setting up to do objectives, make sure you either communicate with your team that you want to pressure, or keep an eye on them and wait until they start pressuring themselves before you begin. This kind of teamwork is the most important thing when it comes to actually escaping and winning the match as a runner. If the hunter comes to the objective that you're pressuring, don't hide unless you're completely alone and can barely defend yourself. If you have multiple people in the objective, and especially if you have a diverse set of classes, try to waste his time for as long as possible. 
You can use your combined abilities to harass him for a significant amount of time, and as long as your teammates are doing objectives across the map, it becomes an easy win for you and your team. This kind of teamwork and strategy is essential for a winning formula as a runner. Alright, that's going to be it for this video. Death Garden is still a very new game, and I'm sure the meta will evolve as the game goes on. I'll try to add more videos that are in-depth on specific classes or strategies if the interest is there for them. Thanks everybody for watching, feel free to sub to the channel, and give me any feedback in the comment section below. I'll see ya nerds.